Yes, hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is the Claret's Daily News here on Turfcast. And of course, it's the manager chat that's going to be dominating the show again today, as it pretty much did all last week and our first ever week doing the show. And if you are new to the channel, please remember to hit subscribe. I was looking at the comments on our latest news video from Friday uh, and there was a, a chap in there, apologies his name escapes me at the minute, saying I've not heard of Turfcast before, I've just come across these videos, they're fantastic, keep it up. And that's exactly what I wanted to do, I just wanted to reach out to sort of like a new audience by doing this because obviously we have the debate shows and the podcasts and stuff like that. But I know things like that aren't always everyone's cup of tea and our style of mates in the pub podcast might not be, might not be people's favourite style of podcast. So doing something like this is... Uh, a brilliant way to open the channel up to new people. So if you are new, please remember to hit subscribe. Please remember to like as well. So then the algorithm brings you back here. Um, but yeah, we're entering the third week now. I think it is of the manager search, or it will be three weeks on Wednesday. I know that much of the manager search at Burnley Football Club. And we have a new favourite, Rude Van Nistelrooy, the former Manchester United striker, is now the favourite to become the new manager of Burnley Football Club. He's been backed in to 3-1 to one on this morning. Now, he did become favourite yesterday. Someone highlighted it on Twitter yesterday, but it was still 11-10 to 10 at that point. Obviously, people have been diving on it. And so I, I explained how the bookies' odds work in a quite pedantic way to you all uh, on Friday. So I'm not going to do it again. I know you all realise that this doesn't mean he's going to become the manager, but it's interesting. And it's interesting in the sense that he's now, what, the fifth favourite, the fifth different favourite. So the only interesting factor about this is it's just proving the bookies haven't got a clue. The bookies have not got a clue who's going to be Burnley's new manager. They've seen the stuff on Twitter, they've seen the money coming in, and they've, and they've shortened the prices because they're just covering the backs in case, you know, he is so... We've had um, Frank Lampard as the favourite. We've had Scott Parker as a favourite. We've had Liam Rossini as a favourite. And now Ruud van Nistelrooy as well. I think Bellamy was a favourite at the start as well. So we've had a lot of different favourites. Um, and obviously the odds are on your screen now. Um, but just going through the current market, and this is correct as of Monday at 9.45am. Uh, Ruud van Nistelrooy is favourite at 3-1 to one on Carlos Colbran. He's then all the way to 8. And this is the only difference actually this time, to be fair. I might be wrong. But I don't ever seem to remember there being a favourite, odds on favourite, and then the next price being all the way out to 8 to 1. That's probably the only interesting bit about this. But again, as I said earlier, the fact that it is the fifth different favourite or whatever he is, uh, again, shows that the bookies haven't got a clue. Uh, then you've got Frank Lampard, also at 8 to 1. Then Scott Parker, also at 8 to 1. Then Liam Rossini, Craig Bellamy at 20s. I'm not a betting man, I am, I lied. Um, but at 20 to 1 for Bellamy, when he's been interviewed... If I were going to put my money on anybody, and this isn't me saying I think it's going to be Craig Bellamy or I have any inside information about it being Craig Bellamy, I'd, that's where I'd be putting my money. To say that he's the same price as Thierry Henry at 20 to 1 is just staggering to me. Uh, QPR manager, Cofientes, again, apologies if I butchered it, at 33 to 1. Then you've got Steve Cooper, who for some reason is still in the market despite saying he didn't want it. Uh, all the way out at 40s, and then Alan Pardew at 50 to 1. So, yeah, they're the current, uh, the current odds for the market to become the Burnley manager. Ruud van Nistelrooy is now the favourite. It was Scott Parker on Friday. It was Frank Lampard on Wednesday. It's probably going to be somebody else this Wednesday coming if we haven't appointed a manager by then, which I don't think we will. We may see an appointment towards the end of the week, probably more so next week, I would imagine, if they've been happy with the people that they've interviewed so far. Who knows? From what I gather... The people that have been interviewed so far, these names of the decision that we made will be put to Alan today, uh, well, this week, and then he'll make a decision on it. So we'll see, we'll see. The, the board may not end up liking any of the ones that have been interviewed. They, they may feel that you know somebody else will be more suited or they may want to give somebody else a try, but we'll see. Hopefully we get it done sorted because obviously the players will be coming back within the next, what, are we on the 17th? Probably about the next couple of weeks. So we've got a bit of time. There's no need to rush it to get it wrong for me, but I would like to start seeing a bit of movement and some some news about it potentially getting done and hopefully get it done with a, um, a good manager. Uh, and not somebody that's uh, going to take us backwards. Just sticking with the manager chat for a little bit, if I may, um, there was a couple of new names or some new rumours over the course of the weekend. Obviously, we don't do this video at the weekend. It's just every single weekday. So please allow me to go back to Friday when Igor Tudor, um, who left Lazio recently, uh, was reported to be hugely admired um, by Burnley. This was tweeted by a lad called Tom Colomosse. 
um, who works for the Daily Mail. Um, again, I have that, that. That was genuinely the first time I'd heard that name in relation to the Burnley manager's role. Whether that's his agent telling the journalist just to get his name out there, or it's just the journalist plucking a name out of the hat. And as a former journalism student. I attempted it in the world of journalism. Um, probably wasn't for me in the sense that I clearly wasn't good enough. Um, I doubt he would have done that. I doubt he would have done that. So something somewhere has told this journalist about Igor Tudor. Um, again, I do speak to people. You can take that with a pinch of salt. I've always said a million times, anything I say, put right at the bottom of the barrel. But I had not heard that name with the people that I speak to. So I doubt... Um, he will be even mentioned again. I was going to say I doubt he'll be the Burnley manager. I would put my house on him not becoming the Burnley manager at this stage. Again, watch that get clipped up when he's installed as a Burnley manager. Someone knocking at the door saying, you owe me a house. Um, so that was Friday. Again, leave that one for me. I, I, I would be very, very, very surprised if he um, is uh, the Burnley manager. Uh, and that, the next one came from Footy Insider 24-7. Now, I do say put what I say at the bottom of the barrel. You can get Footy Inside and put that even further underneath because they said, and this was Saturday, I think, they said, West Bromwich Albion manager Carlos Corbran has been interviewed for the vacant manager's position at Burnley. Um, and they went on to say, I'm oh, sorry, this was, this was um, what's he called? It's Pete O'Rourke. Uh, this was who used to work for Sky Sports and is now a, I think he's a freelancer. Oh no, he works for Footy Inside of 24-7. There you go. So again, take this with a very, very, very large pinch of salt. He said, Burnley have interviewed four candidates on Wednesday and another two on Friday as they close in on an appointment. Liam Rossini has believed, is now believed, sorry, um, to be out of the running. So... From what I gather, Carlos Corbran has not been interviewed for the Burnley manager's job. So the fact that he's then gone on to say Liam Rossini is believed to be out of the running, again, I would take that with a pinch of salt. But um, just, you can pretty much rubbish all of that. Igor Tudor, Carlos Corbran and Liam Rossini out of the Liam Rossini may or may not get the job. Like he, he may be a little bit further down in the thinking. But to say he's completely out of the running, I think... Um, is a bit of a stretch. He was interviewed. He was obviously fancied. His interview may or may not have gone well. Obviously, we don't know. When we guess we never will know. Um, but yeah, um, when it comes from Footy Insider, you can pretty much discount it. Um, they get stuff right every now and then. Obviously, of course they do. But um, it's 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 very very rare. And as for Igor Tudor, that was a name that was plucked out of the hat on Friday and has not been mentioned since. Final one from me on today's show. And finally, we get to talk about something other than the managerial search. But this one is the fact that Burnley have told Maxime Esteve that he cannot represent France at the Summer 2024 Olympics. And of course, they're being held in France. It's the Paris 2024 Olympics, right? So I would imagine that Maxime is a little bit annoyed at this one. Again, I've, I've not heard that, but just a guess. Yeah, he's a young lad trying to make his way in, in football. He's a good defender, probably not quite good enough. Well, definitely not good enough now for the French team, as good as he is for us, and potentially might not ever be good enough for the full French team. So this could have been his only chance to represent France at what other people, other, other nations, see as a, a major tournament. I know we don't take the football side of the Olympics very seriously here in the UK, but a lot of other nations do, especially the South American nations. And I think a lot of the European nations do take it. It's not quite as serious as, as the South American ones, but they, too, they, they do take it quite seriously. And um, yeah, the news came quite last minute, actually. like It only brought yesterday this. And I know the Olympics aren't due to start until what is it, late July, early August, I think it goes on till. But they were due to meet up today, as of Monday the 17th, that the French Olympic squad are meeting up today, wherever it is, probably somewhere in France, obviously. So it's it's quite last minute. The news came out yesterday, when he was told, obviously we don't know, but you would, just, you would think that the news wouldn't have been too far behind it, so he might have been told on Friday, Saturday or Sunday, you would have 
you know, I expect him to be pretty much ready. He seemed excited. He put a post up on Instagram about it and saying that he was excited to do it. Um, but yeah, uh, according to French newspaper L'Equip, so it's pretty legit. They're a very, very, very big news orga- news organisation. Put my teeth back in, in France. Uh, Burnley have blocked Maxime Estevez's participation in the 2024 Olympics. The decision has been made at short notice due to an injury to another one of the club's players. Now, I get it. We're protecting our asset, right? He is our asset, but it's potentially a once in a lifetime opportunity because I'm not sure he's going to be good enough to represent France. He may well go on to represent France, but I'm not sure he's ever going to be good enough to represent France at a major tournament. It's good that he's in and around the setup, but this might have only been his his only chance. And I, I can't imagine that being good news to him. I would suspect he's a little bit down about it. I know I would be. Um, obviously, I'm just guessing. I don't know the man's emotions on the matter. Um, from what I have seen recently, he's not put anything on Instagram about it. The club obviously haven't commented on it. And the reason, say if it was a, a major tournament like the World Cup or the Euros, we can't turn around and say, you are not allowed to participate in it. We can't do that. But because it's not seen as a major tournament by FIFA the Olympics we can do it so there's nothing Maxime or the French squad can do if we've said he can't play in it he can't play in it but obviously the other part of this news is the fact that this means that there's a quite a serious injury to somebody at centre back and you would suspect it's Ekdal because obviously he was stretched off not long ago playing for Sweden it could be I, I, I didn't suspect that that one was that bad I thought it didn't look that bad at the time um, I didn't see any footage of it I just saw some pictures but it was just it just looked like a strain right or, or or an impact injury there was no like massive you know scene about it it was not you know like remember when obviously Ashley Westwood broke his leg at West Ham so that's a very extreme example but you get my point like you, even from the pictures you could tell that that one was horrendous but I didn't realise it was that bad. There's been no news about it from the club. There's been nothing from Sweden about how serious it is, unless we've missed it, of course. So I didn't realise that one was that bad. But it looks like it would probably be that one, putting two and two together. You could suspect that maybe it means that somebody's leaving and we're just using that injury as a cover-up. Um, Bayer, for example. Um, obviously, we didn't see much of him last season anyway, so would it be that much of a miss? I mean, I quite like him. I think he's one of, if not our best defender. And if we have these three defenders, four defenders, should I say, next season in the Championship, Jordan Bayer, Maxine Esteve, Dara Roche and Ekdal, that's a very good, very good set of centre-back um, pairings in the Championship. So I think we'll be all right in that department. But the fact that um, there is an injury and we are now looking at stopping Esteve from participating in a tournament that's going to stretch into August would mean that this injury is obviously going to go on to the start of the season. So we'll see. We'll see. It's going to be interesting who's still here come the start of the season, but this injury does worry me a little bit. But I like Esteve. He's a fantastic defender. He's more than capable of being a championship defender for his next season. I think he will be just as good, if not better, uh, than what Jordan Bayer was the first time around in the championship. And if we have a centre-back pairing, like obviously I'm getting ahead of myself. We don't know who's going to be here, right? And this could even annoy Esteve that much that he says he wants to leave. We'll see. I doubt it. He doesn't seem like the kind of guy to, to, to kick up a stink, but we'll see. Um, but imagine a centre-back pairing of... Well, this is harsh on anybody, to be fair, because Dara doesn't deserve to be dropped, but uh, a centre-back pairing of Esteve and Bayer or Esteve and Dara or Dara and Bayer. Very, very good. Very, very good at championship level. But yeah, we'll see. But uh, yeah, the news on that one is that Maxime Esteve will not be representing France at the Summer 2024 Olympics because Burnley have said, no, you can't do it, which is a shame for him. I'm sure it is, but I get it. We're protecting our assets. But that's it for today's show. Um, if you've enjoyed it, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think about the news, what you think about the manager search. Let me know who you want. If if it is going to be Ruud van Nistelrooy, I'm pretty excited. It, it It's cut from the same cloth. Not he is cut from the same cloth, but the type of appointment is cut from the same cloth as a VK appointment. Ex-legend at a Manchester club coming in. Had had some experience as a manager, but not a lot. I think he's actually got a little bit more than VK at the time that VK came in. Um, again, if I'm wrong, I won't clip it out. I won't care. Um, but again, if I'm wrong, please don't abuse me in the comments. Um, but yeah, I, th- I think he could do well. I think he could do well. But am I just getting sucked into a foreign name again? Who knows? Fingers crossed we get some news about it soon because um, 
yeah, like I said earlier, we need to get it sorted, but we also need to get it right. So soon, but take your time at the same time. Make sure you get it right, Alan, if you're watching this. It's definitely not. Um, but yeah, like I said, let me know what you think, and we'll be back tomorrow, same time, maybe earlier. We'll see. <laughs>